I recently read The Case Against the Sexual Revolution, A New Guide to Sex in the 21st Century by Louise Perry. It was quite interesting, thought-provoking, and I always enjoy reading things that challenge some of my current views. Now, her book is geared primarily towards how hookup culture affects women, but she does also write that casual sex harms men too, though not as immediately and not as obviously. I'll only discuss parts of the book that I think are relevant to this conversation today, but first I would like to share my own experience with hookup culture and disclaim that I'm not trying to talk anyone into anything or to say that my way of thinking and living is the right way or the good way. Personally, I find a person's sex life to be the least interesting thing about them, whether you are the Samantha Jones of the world or the Charlotte Yorks, I hope we can all be friends. Hookup culture has always been one of those things that never made sense to me personally. No matter how much it was encouraged by peers growing up, no matter how much it's been promoted on TV, it's always remained one of those, I just don't get it, things for me. Similarly, I know that there were people who would look at me and think, I just don't get it. You know, when I would choose, not to go home with a cute guy I met at a party or when I had not been intimate with someone that I was dating at the time, I was absolutely called, you know, boring. I was called a prude. Now, during those teen years, whenever there had been like a party or a gathering of some sort, my friends and I would meet up afterwards and we would chat about what had happened and who would talk to who and who hooked up. And it was such a great time, you know, being young and giggly over your crush. And I remember how I would catch myself admiring them at times. You know, the people who could just disappear with some guy or some girl they had met at a party, let's say, and hook up and then continue on like nothing had happened. It seemed to me at the time that they could simply switch up their hearts and just enjoy themselves. And that exactly, the idea of detaching emotionally while engaging in such an intimate act with another person, to do so willingly without any mutual foundation of trust, respect, and commitment. It clearly seems to be working for some people, but not everyone operates like that. Now, while everyone may not be interested in hooking up, everyone most certainly should be interested in signing up to BetterHelp. This video is in paid partnership with BetterHelp, the platform that connects you to a therapist who is trained to listen and to give you helpful, unbiased advice. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. I know this can all be very complex, it's about to get even more complex as we dive into this video even deeper, but you're being pulled in different directions, you know, especially when you're young, things like fitting in are at the top of your mind. And it doesn't help that we are being bombarded with so much information and different ways of living, you know, how we should be dating, how we should be having sex. It can all be quite difficult to navigate. The most important thing is to do what feels genuine and authentic to you, regardless of what other people think or say. And if you do need help navigating those things, therapy could help. Getting access to therapy has never been easier. With BetterHelp, you can have your sessions via phone, video chat, messaging, whatever and whenever is most convenient to you. There's no hassle to get started. You can use the link in my description box or go to betterhelp.com slash Lana. Fill out a questionnaire to assess your specific needs and in most cases, you'll be matched with a therapist within 48 hours or less. And if you're matched with a therapist and it's just not clicking, it's very easy to switch to a different therapist at no additional cost. What's important is that you find someone that is right for you. To try out BetterHelp, click the link in my description box or visit betterhelp.com slash Lana. Clicking that link helps support this channel and it also gets you 10% off your first month at BetterHelp so that you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Now, before diving into her book, keep in mind that what we are discussing here are averages. There are always exceptions, but as Perry writes, it's crucial to remember though that individual exceptions to the rule do not negate the rule. Let's talk about sociosexuality. So in her book, Perry discusses something called sociosexuality, which is basically an individual's interest in uncommitted sex. So those who score low tend towards monogamy, prolonged courtship, and heavy emotional investment in long-term relationships. Those who score high tend toward promiscuity, are quicker to have sex, and experience low levels of romantic relationship closeness. On average, large differences have been found between men and women when it comes to sociosexuality, where men tend to score higher than women. The vast majority of women based on this research, if given the option, prefer a committed relationship to casual sex, 
whereas men on average prefer to have more sex and with a larger number of partners. And this sexuality gap, as she describes it, produces a mismatch between male and female desire at the population level, where there are a lot more men who see casual sex than there are willing women. Perry writes that hookup culture demands that women suppress their natural instincts in order to match male sexuality and thus meet the male demand for no-string sex. Some women are quite happy to do this, but most women find it unpleasant or even distressing. Thus, hookup culture is a solution to the sexuality mismatch that benefits some men at the expense of most women. Pseudo relationships. In her book, we get to read parts of an article written by a journalist named Leah Fessler. She shares part of her experience at college and the concept of pseudo relationships, which is new to me. And she writes, two students consistently hook up with one another and typically only each other for weeks, months, or even years. Yet, per unspoken social code, neither party is permitted emotional investment, commitment, or vulnerability. To call them exclusive would be clingy or even crazy. Fessler and her friends quietly admitted to each other that what they really wanted was true intimacy, public recognition of a relationship, an arm around the waist, a hand held in daylight. Now in her research, she found that 100% of the interviewees and three quarters of the survey respondents stated a clear preference for committed relationships. Only 8% of the women who said that they were presently in pseudo relationships reported being happy with their situation. And other studies consistently find the same thing, that following hookups, women are more likely than men to experience regret, low self-esteem, and mental distress. And most of the time, they don't even orgasm. So women orgasm less overall, even during sex in committed long-term relationships, where the number is 68%, but for hookup, it's only 10%. Sexual preferences. The sexes also differ in sexual preferences, where women are generally much pickier than men and reject a much larger proportion of suitors. So in one study, participants of average attractiveness approached strangers of similar age and proposed to them to have sex. And the majority of the men were willing to have sex with the women who approached them, but not a single woman agreed to have sex with the men approaching them. And now the reason can be multifold, of course, such as, you know, refusing out of concern for your safety. But what's interesting regarding that is that women are also a lot pickier on dating apps where safety, for example, isn't typically a concern. Loveless sex is not empowering, reads another chapter in her book. I want slow love, uncomplicated touch. So Perry writes how having casual sex, or as she writes in the book, having sex like a man, is sort of marketed as a way for women to free themselves from um, old-fashioned expectations of chivalry and obedience, where, you know, historically, male promiscuity has been viewed as either neutral or positive, while female promiscuity has been frowned upon. But she highlights that due to the physical and psychological differences between sexes, and despite there absolutely being women who genuinely enjoy casual sex, it isn't necessarily what benefits women as a group. Another such difference is the risk that comes with sex, such as, you know, the risk of unwanted pregnancy. And while the responsibility is, of course, on both parties, the outcome does still naturally fall on the woman as she cannot simply opt out in the same way. Now, what I'm gathering from her book, from other things that I have read throughout the years, it's been a topic that I've been quite interested in, is that it really falls down to personal preference. You know, what works for me as an individual may not work for you, may not work for someone else, or may work for someone else. Overall, I think nowadays, you know, it's hardly difficult to find resources that encourage and celebrate hookup culture. But on the flip side, I don't see as many people or as many, you know, sources discussing the potential downsides of it or why it may not be beneficial for everyone. Even when we look at, you know, TV shows and movies, I mean, there is no escaping hookup culture. It's everywhere. Um, it's being heavily promoted. And I wanted to 
shed some light on, I guess, the other side of it. Now, whatever you decide to do, no matter how you choose to live your life, I just hope that you are as well informed as you can be and that your choice comes from you and you alone. Because I think that each person already knows, you know, in their heart and in their gut, what is right for them. So just dare to follow that. And I guess also remember that everyone is doing it is not an argument that should automatically persuade you, not in any category of life. Just because a lot of people think something or do something does not mean that it's right or good to do. Do you know what the bandwagon fallacy is? If not, hey, that's your homework. I think it's quite interesting and, you know, always relevant. Anyway, I cannot wait to read your comments on this topic.